Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on countermeasures in the DCS A10C. All right, the first thing we gotta do is choose which countermeasures we wanna use. We can do this by opening the rearming menu. If you're new to DCS, you can open the rearming menu by clicking backslash on your keyboard, then click ground crew, then click rearm and refuel. So there's two things we can change here for the countermeasures. First, we can choose the amount of chaff and flare we want. I'm pretty sure the A-10 holds the most amount of chaff and flare out of any other planes in DCS, which is really cool. You can adjust the sliders here. I'm pretty sure usually I just leave it on half-half, but if you're going to be going against more radar sites, maybe, maybe bring some more chaff. Or if you're going to go against more IR missile sites, then maybe bring more flares. The other thing we can put on is the jammer pod. You can put the jammer pod on pylon 11 or pylon 1. You just right click and hover over pods and you have two jammers here. The 131 is the older jammer and the 184 is the new jammer. Now keep in mind the jammers are not really very effective in DCS. At the very most they might let you get maybe one or two miles closer to the SAM site. So most of the time I don't actually even use the jammer but I'll show you how to do it in this video anyway. Also in DCS I'm not sure if there's any big difference between the old and new jammer but I'll just bring the new one. When you're done you can click OK to rearm your plane. Here's what the jammer pod looks like. So since we just put the jammer on, we need to reload our data cartridge. Whenever we do this, it basically tells our plane we attach the jammer pod. So to do this, you just go to one of your screens and you just hold down one of the bottom buttons. And then you'll see all these pages up. We need the load page, so you're gonna click load and then you're gonna click one of the bottom buttons again. Then you just click it. And here's our load page. I'm just gonna go ahead and load everything. Okay, so now that all the circles came back next to the words, that means everything's loaded. Alright, so now let's get into how to actually use it. There are three things in the plane that control the countermeasures. The first is this panel up here on the front. The next is this little switch on your stick that I'm moving right now. It has five positions, forward, backward, left, right, and press. You need to bind all these positions because this switch is really important. If you want to know what the binding names are, it's this one here, HOTAS CMS. And the last thing that controls the countermeasures is this panel here on the bottom right. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is power on our countermeasure system. You can go to this switch on the bottom right and put it to standby to power it on. Now as you can see, this switch has different positions here. Standby, manual, semi, and auto. In standby, everything will be powered on, but it won't do anything. In man mode, you have to manually select which countermeasures profile you'll use, which I'll talk about that later. And then you have to manually start dispensing countermeasures when you want to. In semi mode, the plane will automatically select the right countermeasures profile to use based off the threats around you. However, you have to tell the plane when to start dispensing. In auto mode, the plane does everything by itself. It chooses the profile and it starts dispensing when it wants to. I wouldn't recommend using auto mode because in auto mode, in DCS, a lot of times the plane starts dispensing countermeasures when it doesn't need to. So you just end up wasting a ton of countermeasures. I personally like manual mode the most, but if you're new, you might want to use semi. So next we have these four power switches on the bottom. The first switch powers on the missile warning system. The missile warning system is basically a system in the plane that will detect missile launches around you and it will play a noise when it detects a launch. The next one is to power on the jammer. The next one is to power on your RWR or radar warning receiver. The RWR basically picks up radar signals around you. And the last one, DISP, turns on your chaff and flare dispensers. Next, we have this switch that says jettison. If you flip this up, it will shoot out all your countermeasures at once. Do not click this or it's gonna be a bad day for you. To the right of that, there's a switch that says brightness. If you turn it to the right, it increases the brightness. Next, we have this switch here that says next with up and down. If you click it, it will cycle through the different countermeasure profiles. The countermeasure profiles basically change how many chaff and flare you're shooting out and how quickly. There are profiles for every letter of the whole alphabet, so A to Z. If you want to adjust a countermeasure profile, it's pretty simple. First, you choose the profile you want to change. So let's say I want to change profile B. I go to B. Then this switch here that says dispenser, you right click it up. And now we can change the profile. First, you can change the chaff by clicking this button here and you can move this cycle. So let's say I want to shoot six chaff, I should go up to six. You can do the same thing to adjust a flare. Let's say I want to shoot two flares, I bring it up like that. Then you can change the cycle, which adjusts how many times this profile will run. And then you can change the interval, which is how quickly it goes one cycle after another. When you're done adjusting the settings, you can click the return button. Okay, so now we'll go over this panel right here in the front. 
This audio switch on the right will change the volume of the radar warning receiver and the missile warning system. The brightness switch changes the brightness. This screen here shows you how many chaff and flare you have left. This screen right here tells you if the missile warning system is powered or not. Then this screen up here tells you the status of the jammer. So first, so right now it's on standby. You can see that just means it's powered on. If I start jamming, then it will switch to operate. Then there's this button on the side, which changes the type of jamming mode. AAA is for anti-aircraft guns. AIR is for airplanes. SAM-1 is for older missile sites. SAM-2 is for newer missile sites. Then there's the RWR panel, which is the radar warning receiver. This is our RWR right here. Basically how this works is whenever another airplane's radar waves or a missile site's radar waves hits our plane, it will show up here. First, there's the priority button on the left. If you turn it on, this green light will come on. By default, with the priority off, we will have a maximum of 16 threats on the RWR. If you turn priority on, it will only show five threats, so it's easier to see. If the threats on the RWR are all super close to each other and hard to see, you can click the separate button and they will expand. And then there's the unknown button, which doesn't do anything. All right, so now I'll get in the air and I'll demonstrate everything. All right, so we're in the air right now. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the RWR. So you can see on the RWR, there's some stuff that's looking at us with their radars. Each different thing has a different symbol, and I'll put a table on so you can see the different symbols. Off to the right, we have a S. That means a search radar, so there's a search radar looking at us. And on the top left, you can see NS. That means the NASAMS missile site. Now, when I turn the volume up, you'll be able to hear some beeping noises, which is another way that you can know that stuff is looking at you, too. Now, whenever I get a little bit closer and they shoot a missile at us, then our RWR will do some different stuff, and I'll show you that right now. So, as you can see, the NASAMS just shot a missile at us. Our missile warning system here says launch, meaning that it picked up a launch. You can also see the M symbol here that our RWR picked up a launch too. You can also see this red light here, which means missile. And you could have heard the uh, beeping sound. One thing that I want to emphasize is the difference between the missile warning system and the RWR. The RWR will only pick up radar waves and the missile warning system has sensors around the plane that looks for missile launches. So for example, I have this guy here with an infrared missile launcher. Now this guy's missile launcher does not have a radar on it. So when I'm flying close to him, before he shoots at me, I will have no idea he's there because my RWR won't tell me anything because there's no radar. But whenever he does fire his missile at me, my plane will detect that launch and then I will know. So as you can see, I'm flying right now. There he is down there. I'm not getting any indications. These two things are some other sand sites. Don't worry about these, that's not him. So as you can see, while I'm flying up to him, I'm not getting anything on my RWR, but whenever he shoots at me, then I'll get the missile launch indication because the missile warning system will pick it up. Okay, you can see he launched the missile at me, and you can see now the missile warning system picked it up. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual countermeasures. So first I'm gonna talk about the jammer because it's the easiest. To turn the jammer on, all you gotta do is come down here and make sure the power switch is flipped up. Then you gotta choose your jammer mode. Let's say I'm going against a uh, AAA system. I click here until it says AAA, and that's my mode. Then all you gotta do is turn the jammer on. You see this five-way switch here? All you gotta do is hold it down for a little bit and then let go. And you can see it says operate, it's blinking. That means it's currently jamming. If you, turn, if you wanna turn it off, all you gotta do is hold it down a little bit and then let go and you can see it's back to standby. So now let's talk about the actual chaff and flares. So there's three different modes here, manual, semi-auto. First, we'll do manual. In manual mode, the first thing you wanna do is select your countermeasures profile. You can select it by using this rocker switch right here. It goes A through Z. I'll put up a chart right now so you can see what the different profiles do. Basically, the countermeasures profile chooses how many chaff and flare to shoot out and how quickly to shoot them out. So let's say I wanna do like profile E. I'll click that to go to E. Then all you gotta do to activate the profile is you click the same switch you did for the jammer, except instead of holding it, you just press it. So whenever I press it, you can see it's shooting out chaff and flare now, and you can see that diamond right there means it's on. Now it just went back to an M for manual, that means the profile's done. If you have a really slow profile and you decide you wanna stop it, so like let's say it's in the middle of dispensing and you wanna stop it, all you do is click it again. So you can see I click it to turn it on, and then I click it again and it turns off. All right, so now we have semi-automatic. So in semi-mode, the plane will automatically choose the profile for you based on the threats around you, except you have to manually choose when to activate it. So let's fly over to that missile site again, and whenever it shoots at me, you can see that the plane will automatically select the profile. 
So as you can see, the NASAMS just shot the missile at me and it just changed from profile A to B automatically. Now all I have to do is click this to start dispensing. So last I'm gonna go over automatic mode. So in automatic mode, the plane does everything for you. It will decide which profile to use and it will automatically start dispensing. Okay, you can see it shows a profile and it's already shooting out shaft like crazy. Now this is the reason I told you I really don't recommend using automatic mode because the plane has absolutely no limit. It just starts shooting stuff like crazy. That was like five seconds and it literally just used almost all of my chat. If you are new, I would probably recommend using semi-automatic because automatic mode is just ridiculous. So the last thing I have to go over is what the other five uh, positions on the countermeasure switch do. So we talked about pressing it, but we didn't talk about forward, backward, left, and right yet. So basically forward, backward, left, and right are positions on the switch that do functions that always are the same no matter what mode you're in. These are basically functions you can do if someone shoots a missile at you and you weren't expecting it and you need countermeasures immediately. So pressing it forward will shoot out one flare like this. Pressing it backward is the same but for chaff. Pressing it left shoots out six flares and right shoots out six chaff. The last functions for this switch is holding it forward and holding it backward. Now this is really useful if you are in manual mode. So if you hold it forward and backward, it will switch between your countermeasures profiles. So you can see I go D, E, F. And um, this is really useful in your man if you're in manual because you don't have to take your hand off your stick and you don't have to come over here and mess with this thing. To end this video, I'm just gonna click the jettison switch so you can see what it looks like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.